The demand for the first two NVIDIA GeForce 30 series graphics cards, the RTX 3080 and 3090, has been unparalleled, with gamers flocking to buy these game-changing graphics cards. The RTX 3080 in particular is in such demand because it delivers smooth frame rates at 4K with gorgeous ray trace graphics, yet it costs a fraction of the previous generation RTX 2080 Ti. And now it's the turn of the cut-down RTX 3070, and boy! Is this one another good one? Like its bigger sibling, the RTX 3070 is based on the Ampere architecture, albeit a cut down version called GA104. For an in depth look at the Ampere architecture, please watch our original video on the RTX 3080. Now, the most notable difference GA104 is the use of standard GDDR6 memory instead of the fancy pants GDDR6X that you'll find in the GA102 cards. However, armed with 5,888 CUDA cores, 184 tensor cores, 46 RT cores and 8 gigabytes of memory, the RCX 3070 is by no means underpowered and it's still a high spec graphics card. We put the GeForce RTX 3070 card through its paces up against the higher spec RTX 3080 and 3090, plus the three fastest previous generation GeForce RTX 20 series cards. That's the Titan RTX 2080 Ti and the 2080 Super. As these are all high-end graphics cards, all the benchmarks run at the highest quality settings with all the eye candy dialed up to the max at two resolutions, 2560 by 1440 and 3840 by 2160. All of the cars were tested with the latest Nvidia driver using a fresh install of Windows 10 Home. Like the RTX 3080, we found that using a PCIe 4 motherboard made no appreciable performance difference despite PCIe 4 having doubled the bandwidth of PCIe 3. As such, we completed all of the testing on the following 3XS gaming PC, as right now Intel CPUs are king for gaming. The original RTX 3080 and 3090 performed brilliantly in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, especially with DXR and DLSS enabled, so we were keen to see how the new RTX 3070 runs this game. In traditional rasterized mode with a bucket load of anti-aliasing, we saw very similar performance to the RTX 2080 Ti, which is a great achievement considering the much lower price of the new card. We saw the same pattern with DXR enabled, with a super smooth frame rate of 78 frames per second. This means that the RTX 3070 is a perfect match for a 1440p monitor, delivering high frames, even with all the eye candy turned up to 11. We then upped the work for the graphics cards by increasing the resolution to 4K. Once again, the RTX 3070 performed similarly to the RTX 2080 Ti, although there was more of a difference with DLSS and DXR enabled than in traditional rasterized mode. Whilst the frame rate of 49 frames per second is by no means slow, realistically you need to start turning down some of the quality settings to achieve a consistently smooth frame rate in 4K in this game. Metro Exodus remains one of the most challenging games to run at a smooth frame rate. Once again, we saw the RTX 3070 delivering identical performance to the RTX 2080 Ti with a frame rate of 53 frames per second with DXR on, so we may need to drop a setting or two to get a consistently smooth experience. You can see the possibilities open to you in the DXR off result, which saw the frame rate go up to a smoother 58 frames per second. Just like with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Metro Exodus also proved too much for the RCX 3070 at 4K. The average frame rate of 39 frames per second with DXR on and 40 frames per second with DXR off simply aren't fast enough for a great gaming experience. We also ran 3D Mark times by benchmark on all of the cards. Despite being a synthetic benchmark rather than a real game, TimeSpy is popular with gamers as it's so easy to run, so it is worth including here. The results are output as a score with a higher number indicating faster performance. And once again, the RTX 3070 proved to have very similar performance to the RTX 2080 Ti, meaning that it's far faster than any similarly priced cards from the previous GeForce RTX 20 series range.
The new RTX 3070 has a TDP of 220 watts compared to the 260 watts of the RTX 2080 Ti. So it should come as no surprise that its real world power draw is lower too. Our test system drew a peak of 355 watts from the wall, a lot less than any contemporary graphics cards. So you don't need nearly as powerful and hefty PSU to run the RTX 3070 at its best. The first NVIDIA 30 series graphics card, the RTX 3080, rewrote the rules of what to expect from a sub £1,000 graphics card, delivering high frame rates at 4K even with gorgeous DXR ray tracing enabled. The next model to be released, the RTX 3090, was another game-changing graphics card, delivering unparalleled performance and promising to usher in a new era of 8K gaming. And whilst not as revolutionary, the RTX 3070 is probably the card that most gamers will go for, for the simple reason it provides bucket loads of performance at an affordable price. In this video, we've constantly compared the RTX 3070 to the previous generation RTX 2080 Ti, as the two cars have such similar performance, and that says a lot, as the RTX 2080 Ti was the flagship card of the 20 series and cost well over a grand. The RTX 3070, on the other hand, cost well under half of that, with an average price of around £500. And whilst the RTX 3070 does struggle a bit at 4K with ray tracing, it's an absolute monster at 1440p, delivering smooth frame rates and a fantastic gaming experience. Factor in all the other value-added goods such as Reflex, Broadcast, RTX IO and Omniverse Machinima that comes with the RTX 30 series GPUs and the RTX 3070 is a fantastic upgrade. Scan sells NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 graphics card from a wide variety of manufacturers, although like the RTX 3080 and 3090 PC supply is expected to be limited for some time after launch. Alternatively, if you're after a new PC, then why not take a look at an RTX 3070 powered PC from 3XS Systems. Follow the links in the description to find out more.